talking about these uh, non-linearities of A2D converters, which are basically defined by where the transition points are. I will elaborate on those things because uh, I talked only about INL and DNL. There are a couple of other things that are also important. Okay. Firstly, let me draw the ideal characteristics. So, the output is digital. And ideally, the transition points between any two codes are spaced equally by one LSP. Okay, so there are many kinds of errors that can happen. So first, let's take one particular type of error where all the transition points are shifted by some amount, the same amount. Okay, so instead of the blue curve, Let's say we have something like this, okay, the red curve. So, what do you think of this characteristic? Is it a good A2D converter? Is it very bad? What will happen? Is it a serious problem? See, uh, the levels are still equally spaced. Okay, so that important property is still there. So, if you plot the quantization error in the middle part, it will still have a range of VLSB. Okay. Now, all the transitions are shifted to the right by some amount. That is like having an adding an offset voltage to the input. Okay. So, generally this is not a serious problem. Now, there are two kinds of uh, applications for A2D converters. One in which the absolute scale is important. Let's say you have a multimeter and so on. Now you can't have an offset there. You can't have like one millivolt added to every voltage. That will still be wrong. Okay. Then there are A2D converters used in uh, uh, for audio and let's say radio and so on. If the audio has one millivolt offset, if one millivolt is added to every voltage, it doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, you can't hear DC. Right. Some kinds of errors don't matter for such uh, applications. So generally, offset is not a serious issue, although in some cases it is. So, we do not, uh, because yesterday if you look at the definition of INL and DNL I gave, you will say now that INL is constant, right, for all values. But we do not classify this as INL because it is not really nonlinear. I will come to that part, what is meant by nonlinearity later, but it is not nonlinear at all. Okay. All the transition points are still equally spaced. What I mean by nonlinear, it is not nonlinear is, let us say we plot only the transition points okay, with respect to the output code. In the ideal case, where will they be? Where will be the first transition point? It will be at VLSB in, in the ideal case. Okay. So there will be one here and another here and the other here and the other here and so on. Okay. The ideal case it will be a straight line passing through the origin. Now in case of offset what happens is we have shifted it to the right. So this is moved by some amount, this is moved by the same amount. Okay. So what kind of a curve will join all these things? Still it is a straight line. It only has an offset. Okay. 
so this is what i mean by it is still linear the points still lie in a straight line but they have moved with respect to the original set of points so this kind of an error is known as an offset error okay so this much error this is the offset the voltage offset and typically all errors in an a to d or a d to r is normalized to 1 lsb okay so you say offset is p offset by v lsb you count it in some number of lsbs so if all the transition points are shifted by an equal amount you can simply add an offset to the input and bring them back okay that's the idea whether you really do it or not uh, it's generally not considered a very serious error okay and typically you measure the offset and this v offset is nothing but let's the transition points are labeled v of 1 and so on v of 1 so this v of 1 is the transition point between 0 and 1 okay so the offset is nothing but the actual transition point to go from 0 to 1 minus the ideal transition point to go from 0 to 1 divided by vlsb okay and if you move the characteristic by to the left by this amount then all the transitions will coincide with the ideal values okay that's pretty obvious here okay this is okay it's just a definition now let me look at another type of error okay so in this case let's say what happens is the first one is coincident with the actual one then the second one is for instance at instead of a 2 lsb it is a 2 and half okay let's say this is a 2 and half lsb then the next one instead of being at 3 is at 4 okay and the next one is at this point and the next one is here and here and here okay so the first one is at 1 uh, lsb second one is at 2 and half then 4 5 and half 7 8 and half and 9 okay 1 2 3 4 5 okay sorry not 9 10 so the transition points are shifted and i have showed you where the transition points are and ideally of course they should be at 1 vlsb 2 vlsb and so on what do you think of this a to d is it non linear it is non linear it is not non linear we have a dissenting opinion 
no it is monotonic no it's not enough to be monotonic you also have to be linear okay what is the step size so i if you look at it the difference between these two is 1 and 1/2 the difference between next two is also 1 and 1/2 and so on right all of them are 1 and 1/2 okay so the step sizes are equal what does it mean exactly so it's just that it's a a to d converter with a different lsb voltage that's all we had our lsb voltage of vlsb now this has 1 and 1/2 vlsb that is okay the range is also wider okay it's simply like having a different range uh, different reference voltage for the a to d converter okay okay but it is equal i mean all the uh, transition widths are all the widths are equal intervals so let's say i had an ideal a to d whose transitions are separated by vlsb okay how can i get this characteristic i have an entity whose uh, which is ideal okay this is the ideal value ideal my ideal case where the transition widths are vlsb now i want to get this type of characteristic using that ideal entity and something else how can i do that can i do that no without changing yeah one is simply i change the v reference here okay if i simply change the v reference it does not make it non linear it's simply like having a different step size okay another way to think about it is this here at this point when v in changes by uh, this point the interval between the transitions is 1 lsb okay and for my characteristics i need 1 and 1/2 vlsb okay that's the characteristic i have written so if i insert a gain of 1 by 1.5 here what happens if this input v in prime changes by 1 and 1/2 vlsb what will be the change here vlsb so this is exactly like having some gain factor in front of the a2d converter okay so this type of uh, uh, error is known as a gain error okay so first let's evaluate exactly what kind of characteristic this block will give you so the block diagram i have below what will be the input output characteristics of that will it be exactly the same as this exactly the same will be the first transition what will be the input output characteristics of this block okay but uh, let's go with this right initially of course if the voltage is very small the output code will be zero when will it change to one what is the input voltage at which it will change to one 1.5 vlsb right if i have 1.5 vlsb here i'll have one vlsb here okay so if i have only a gain error the characteristic will look like this something like this okay this has only a gain error so what does this have the characteristic that i originally drew
the first transition was at 1 VLSB, right? So there is also an offset. Okay. So this is, if I have only a gain in front of the A to D, this is the characteristic I will have. Okay. And in this case, I have made the first transition, I have moved all the transitions to the left by half VLSB. Okay. So that is a sort of convention. Okay. I will always make the, basically I will take whatever offset is there in the A to D converter and I will make it equal to 0. Okay. I will make sure that the first transition is at 1 VLSB. I mean this is not in design. This is I am talking about how to measure the non-idealities of A to D converters. Because I want to be able to distinguish offset error and the gain error and all other kinds of errors. Okay. So, what I will do is, let me go to a new plot. So let's say I have some characteristic like this, one and a half, then three, then four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. Okay? I have something like this. And my reference VLSB, that is the VLSB I want to achieve is one. One VLSB. Okay? Reference LSB I want to achieve is one. VLSB. So, my ideal characteristics would have been like this. Okay. Now, if I look only in this region, the first transition can be anywhere. I mean, it could be because of gain error or offset error. Okay. So, I will always treat that as the offset error. Right. So, the offset error is defined to be the difference between the first transition of the actual case and first transition of the ideal case. Okay? Because remember, how do you measure offset in an amplifier? If I gave you an amplifier and had an offset, how will you measure it? Yeah. So, you set the input to 0 and you measure the output voltage. Okay? Can you do that here? Why can't you do that here? Can you set the input voltage to 0 and measure the output? What will happen if you set the input to 0 and measure the output in an 8 converter? No, no, that is okay. But, uh, why will we not do so that is true in an amplifier also right an amplifier has an offset okay then i set the input to zero and the output will be the output offset voltage so how would i measure the offset of an a to d why can i not do okay will that give me the right answer so these two for instance yeah so this one of, we clearly know that one of them has an offset right the red one has an offset so, what will happen to these two if you apply a zero input? Will you get different values? No, but output is digital, right? So, see, what happens is if you set the input to zero here, in both cases you will get zero, right? Because it is quantized. For a range of inputs, it gives you a zero output. So, to measure the offsets, you should look at the significant points of the A to D characteristic, which are the transitions. The A to D characteristic is defined by the transitions. Without the transitions, there is nothing. Right? In fact, you could have a characteristic like this, where the output is not changing at all and you won't be able to tell by applying a zero input. So, you have to look at where the transitions occur between each pair of codes between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 and so on. Okay? So, to measure the offset, 
you have to see where the first transition occurs. You, for the, both the ideal converter and the actual converter, you see the input voltage at which it transitions from 0 to 1. Okay. So, that will give you the offset voltage. So, whenever you are measuring an A to D converter, you first measure the offset voltage, which is the difference between actual and ideal first transitions. Okay. Okay. And how will you measure the gain error? Again, let's take an amplifier. How will you measure the gain in a gain error in an amplifier? So let's see. First of all, let's make an analogy here. I have an amplifier and we already know that it has a gain error. So, it is k times v in plus also some v o s. Okay. And this a to d also has gain and offset errors. To measure the offset, here we can ground the input and the output will be the offset. But that won't be true here. So, here you have to look at the input voltage for the first transition. That is what I denote by V in of 1. Okay. Next I need to measure the gain. How will I do that? Firstly, let us do it for an amplifier which we are more familiar with. How will I measure the gain of this amplifier? Hmm? Output by input, but that won't give me the stuff, right? Because output by input will be k times v in plus v o s divided by v in. So I will get k plus v o s by v in, and the value itself depends on v in, which should not happen. Okay? So essentially, I am saying when I measure the amplifier, I want to extract the value of k. How will I do that? Huh? Yeah, how, what would I do? Okay. And then? <coughs> no, no, no. We are talking about the amplifier now. There are no transitions in an amplifier, right? Yeah. So, how many measurements will you need to find out the slope? Two. So, you need to make at least two measurements. You can't get it from one measurement. Okay. So, you apply V1, find out the first output voltage, apply V2, find out the second output voltage, and then the difference between these divided by the difference between these will give you the gain. Okay. So, you have to make two measurements to get the gain and not be confused by the offset. If you just uh, assume that there is no offset and then apply the formula, then uh, the answer will be completely wrong. Okay. So, based on this, how many measurements would you need to measure the gain of an A to D? I mean, you would think that, okay, for an amplifier you need two, for an A to D also you need two. 
So which two will you measure? What are the two measurements? I mean, any, anything. So, see the, this transition itself, I mean this characteristic itself has a discrete y axis and a continuous x axis. So, you can't say the slope of this thing, right? It's not defined. Only if x and y are continuous can you have something called a slope. And these transitions we write for convenience, but the, these parts are really not there. Okay. So basically, it is this and then jumps to the next one and so on. It's not even a continuous curve like that. Okay. It's convenient to write it like a step. That's why staircase. That's why we do that. Okay. So, like people pointed out, you have to make two measurements and one convenient thing to do is to do the first and last. Okay. What is the ideal difference between the first and last transitions? Ideally, this one. How much is it? 6 VLSP. So, it is 6 times VLSP. Okay. And the actual difference is something else. Okay. So, that gives you the gain error. Right. So, basically, if I essentially apply this factor, I can shrink the entire characteristic, the red characteristic to coincide with the black characteristic. What, what do I need to do to make this coincide with this? I have to first drag it to the left by an amount equal to the offset and then I have to shrink it by this uh, difference divided by the actual difference. Okay? Is that okay? Yes or no? No, no, slope of what? Yeah. Yeah, we will come to that. Yeah, we will uh, come to that. Okay. So, because so far there is uh, that won't, in fact, by looking at the first and last transitions, we have not looked at anything in the middle, right? So, we will look at those things also. Okay. So, first what we will do is, essentially we are uh, measuring the offset error which is like this. Okay. And then you can think of it as dragging the non-ideal characteristic to the left by the offset. So, that the first transition coincides with the first transition here. Then what you do is, you look at the spacing between the first and last in the actual case and the ideal case and you apply a factor. So, that the actual one shrinks by that amount. Okay. So, then what will happen? So, then uh, the last transition will be coincident, coincident with this one, right? Actually, what you do is, you do not even, because you first correct for the offset, okay? You do not necessarily look at the difference between the first and last. You simply look at the last transition and then make it coincide with this by applying a suitable factor, okay? So, let me take this particular case where something like this, you first move this to the left, basically you remove the offset error from the uh, A to D and then you make the last transition coincide with the actual, I mean ideal last transition by scaling it by a factor. Then you scale all the transitions by the same factor, ok. Now, the first transition in the first transition is coincident with the ideal first transition and the last one is also coincident with the ideal last transition, ok. And so far we have taken equal spacings, that means that all the ones in the middle are also coincident with the ideal ones. Okay? And that is not necessarily the case. So, like I told you yesterday, uh, the transition, uh, the intervals may not be equal. So, in that case, if you make the first one coincident and the last one coincident, there is no guarantee that the middle ones will be coincident.
coincident. Okay. So the reason we do all this is, we, yeah. The offset error is the error in the first transition. Okay. Hmm? No, no, no. So what? Uh, so I'll uh, show you how to do that. What you do is you basically scale. I mean, you don't scale the first transition again. Okay. Okay. Let me let me show that. Or maybe we should do the gain error first and then the offset error. Okay. So. So, the way I explained it, I think it is better to do the sorry, this is not what I wanted here. These are the transition points, okay, and the first transition should have been at uh, VLSB, two VLSB, three, four, five, six. And seven. These are the ideal characteristics. Okay, and in reality, you're right. I think I maybe reverse the steps. So in reality, they may be something like this. Okay. So first, what you do is. You take the difference between the last and the first transition. Okay. In general, this will be the two to the n minus one transition and the first transition. Okay. And divide it by what should we what should we divide it by? What is the ideal difference between the last and first transition? 6 VLSB. In an n bit case, huh? in an n bit A to D converter, yeah, in a 3 bit converter it is 6. What is it in an n bit case? 2 to the n minus 2 VLSB. So, this is the gain factor. Okay. So, let me say this is some uh, the gain of the ADC. Okay. Then you divide I think there is something uh, once again let me just pause for a moment. So, you first measure the gain error, then you divide all the transition points by the gain factor. Okay. So, what will happen is let us say the transitions are all at uh, 1.5 VLSB, 3 VLSB and so on. Okay. So, the example I gave before, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, it is at 1.53, 4.5, 6, etcetera. So, in this case, there is only gain error. Okay. There is no offset error at all. I think that is a mistake I made earlier. So, in this case, there is no offset error. There is only the gain error. So, once you divide everything, all of the points will coincide with the ideal points. Okay. And the slope of this line will be equal to obviously the ideal line. In this case, the line itself will be coincident. Now, if in addition to gain error, you also have an offset error. What will happen is when you divide it, you will have some shift okay, between the two. 
the slope will still be the same as this it has to be because you have divided by you have divided by this number you have divided by this number okay slope will still be exactly same as the ideal one but there may be a shift now if there is a shift you can measure the offset by measuring the difference between the first transitions okay which is basically vn of 1 divided by vlsb okay and then you translate the curve by that amount and if it has a gain error and an offset error the now after removing the gain error and the offset error the line will be coincident with the ideal line is it okay so you first scale it and then offset it okay yeah you will So the bottom line is, I mean, that's true. You can interchange them and get different numbers. But the idea is this: that you make the first transition coincident and the last transition coincident. And the way you do it is by one scaling and one translation. Okay? Is okay? So now we have uh, so far assumed that the intervals are all equal. That's why when you divide it by the gain error, when you divide the all the transitions by the gain error. they will become equal to 1 vlsp the intervals between the transitions now there is no guarantee that that will happen okay it's not like uh, the transitions will be spread out by some amount or uh, they will have a fixed offset or anything like that okay so what will happen because of this procedure is that the first one will be coincident with the first one and the last one will be coincident with the last one okay the ones in the middle may have may be different from the ideal values if the widths are unequal okay so let me take a case where so i'll take something like this and let's assume that either there is no gain error and offset error or if it is there i have already removed them by making the first and last transitions coincident okay so the characteristic may look like this the first transition is coincident with this and the next one is not the next one is not okay and the last one is coincident also okay all of this may have shifted so in this case if you plot all the transition points what will the curve look like will it be a straight line huh clearly not the first one will be at vlsb and the last one will be in this case at 6 times 7 times vlsb and in the middle they may have shifted from the ideal values okay so clearly if you make the first one and last one coincident and the remaining are not coincident with the ideal values the curve is non linear is that okay so and from this you can calculate the inl and dnl that i mentioned yesterday okay what is the inl here what is the definition of inl what 
From this curve, can you find the INL? From this plot. Okay, so what is that? How do I find it from this graph? So this is nothing but the transition points versus code. So basically these are the INL values. Okay, the difference between the actual transition point and the ideal transition point that is the INL. Okay, and the reason I went through the gain and offset discussion is that you have to first remove the gain and offset before you measure the INL. Otherwise, I mean if you have a different straight line, so let us say the ideal points are here in one straight line and the actual points are on another straight line, it will look like there is INL. But there really is no nonlinearity. That is also a straight line. Okay, that is the idea. That is why you first get rid of the gain and offset error and you make it a straight line with the same slope and with the coincident first transition. After that you measure the INL. Okay. So, the definition is what I told you yesterday. INL is basically the difference between the actual and ideal transition points and what is DNL? The difference in these intervals. Okay. But before measuring the INL and DNL, you have to get rid of the gain and offset errors. Okay. What is the INL of the first point? What is the INL of the last point? Zero. By definition, there will be zero because you have made the first transition coincident with the ideal value and the last one coincident with the ideal value. So, by definition, the first the INL will start from zero and will end at zero. Okay. First of all, A2D characteristics. are defined by the transition points ok because those are the interesting points of the characteristics elsewhere it is just flat right. So, you measure the to measure an A to D or simulate it you measure the transition points basically the input voltage of k and k goes from 1 to 2 to the n minus 1. So, here v in of 1 I have taken it to mean the transition from 0 to 1. Okay. You should know the definitions that is all. Sometimes the it will be called something else, but uh, v in of k means that it transitions from k minus 1 to k. You measure the gain error, measure the gain rather, and normalize all the transition points. Okay, that is basically you get a new set. Here by gain I mean the actual this should be 2 to the n minus 1. 
Okay, n minus one is not in the exponent. Then you measure the offset. And subtract it. The offset is n of one by n of one minus v l s b by v l s b. Okay, sorry, v in prime of one after correcting for gain. So then you. Get a new set, which is basically the old one, with the offset removed. Okay. So, in fact, let me define this without normalization. That is better. Okay. Now you have a set of characteristics whose uh, first and last transitions are coincident, but the middle ones may not be because of nonlinearity. So then you measure the nonlinearity of the A to D. Okay. What is the definition of I N L? Can you give me the expression? What is I N L? And I N L is dependent on the code, right? For every transition, there is a different value of I N L. What is I N L for code K? So we have to use these numbers, right? V in double prime, V in double prime of K minus. What is it? Yeah. What What is the ideal value? For the k transition, what is the k times v l s b? That's all, right? K times v l s b, and this is always normalized to, almost always normalized to the l s b voltage. So, okay, you get some dimensionless number. You simply say this many l s b's. Okay. And as we discussed earlier, I N L of one is zero, and I N L of uh, two to the k minus one is also zero. Okay, this is because of gain and offset correction. Then you measure DNL. Can you give me an expression for the DNL? Can you give me the expression for the DNL? Yeah. So, in terms of this uh, V in double prime, what is it? Huh? Okay. What is the width of the k transition? Not k transition between k and k plus one transition. Mathematical expression. So, it is V in prime k plus one. Minus v in prime k. So this is the actual width. And what should I? What is the complete expression now? What is the ideal width? Huh? 
real SB. The whole thing is normalized to real SB. Okay. And from this, can you, what is the relationship between INL and DNL? Is there something? So, let me Let me do it particular for the particular case of two. This is okay, and INL of two is. This is okay. For code value equal to 2, I have written the specific expressions. What is the relationship between the INL and DNL for code equals 2? without involving the transition points, right? Is that, is that possible? First of all, what is V in double prime of 1? This one. What is this double prime business? What, the, what did the double prime signify? Gain and offset were removed. So, what, what is V in double prime of 1? Equals? What is the value? VLSB. Okay. So, what is DNL of 2 and INL of 2? What are the values? Same. This itself, this is VLSB. So, you get V in double prime 2 minus 2 VLSB by and VLSB and INL is the same thing. Okay. So, for code word equals 2, DNL and INL are the same. Okay. Which one? Oh, DNL of K is, uh, okay. So, maybe I should make this, uh, let me make it K and K minus 1. That is probably best. Okay. Sorry about that. I will make it K and K minus 1. And for K equal to 1, obviously there is no K minus 1. So, I will define DNL of 1 to be 0. Okay. This is just the definition because uh, there is some confusion in notation. This was k and k minus 1. Okay. So, INL of 2 is the same as DNL of 2.
what about uh, for higher codes will INL DNL be the same do you expect the two to be the same in fact if the two are the same we wouldn't use the two different definitions so what's the relationship for kth code it is ok inlk is And what is INR K minus 1 for the K minus 1th code? I simply substitute K minus 1 here. So now can you figure out a relationship between the two, between INL and DNL? You can express DNL in terms of INL or the other way around, it does not matter. INLK is INLK minus INLK minus 1 minus INLK minus 2 that is it like this how did you get this how did you derive this Only up to two terms. That is K, K minus one and K minus two. Huh? K minus two term will not be there. See, you can see that this is simply this minus this plus two A B. Do you need anything else? Why? The difference between this comes here, okay. When I subtract it, this appears here, and the difference between these two appears here, okay. That's all. You don't need anything else. So, simply the DNL is the first difference of INL, okay. In fact, that's how the name comes about. That's called the integral nonlinearity of the total, and this is the differential nonlinearity. You can see that it is like the difference of INL. Okay. And the DNL of the first one is defined to be zero. Okay. So the procedure is hopefully clear. You first correct for the gain error, then the offset error, then measure the deviations of each point from the ideal values to get the INL. Measure the intervals and find the difference from VLSB that is the DNL and there is a relationship between DNL and INL you do not have to calculate them separately ok any questions on this so these are the basic basic DC specs of the A to D converter ok uh, now that depends on uh, the application ok INL is like the total error and DNL is like the step sizes larger in some cases and smaller in other cases. Now, because we have fit the, can all the DNLs be positive? Is it possible? Can all the DNL values be positive or negative? Because we have fixed the first and last endpoints, right? If something moves, 
something increases and something else decreases okay let's uh, imagine only three transitions for simplicity now by definition we have fixed the first one and the last one so if the second one moves if it moves this way this this width is larger if it moves the other way this one is larger okay so there will be some interval which will be larger than vlsb okay if you have the dnl so what does it mean if the interval is larger than vlsb yeah that is because we correct for the gain and offset errors right you don't want to confuse uh, gain and offset with nonlinearity okay so what this will mean is that the quantization error is larger in some places okay so because the interval is larger that means the quanti- your rounding off is uh, different right maybe you have this uh, strange accounting thing where in some cases you are uh, rounding off to 1 rupee in some cases to 10 rupees so wherever you have rounded off to 10 rupees your uh, error is larger much larger okay now normally here the error won't be 1 to 1 1 is to 10 ratio but generally a larger rounding off error means that there is larger quantization error or quantization noise so yesterday i said there is quantization error and the rms value is vlsp square by 12 okay but that was for an ideal quantizer where all these intervals were equal now you have some to be larger some to be smaller and the net effect is that for some signals the rounding off errors will be much higher okay so that's what happens now where exactly it will matter is for instance let's say you have a, a screen like this and it is maybe black on one side and slowly transitioning or maybe gray on light gray on one side and dark gray on the other side now, as you know all of these things are driven by uh, digital circuits and finally there is a d2a converter now a to d is there we are discussing the a to d but d2a is a similar thing now what will happen let's say you want to show light gray here and dark gray here okay and there will be rows of pixels so maybe for this you give a code of uh, maybe let's say 1000 and for this 999 and 998 and so on and you go on decrementing the code so the intensity will keep on reducing right that's what this whole gray business is if you show it extremely bright it will be white if you show it uh, with zero code if you have zero illumination it will be black and in the middle it will be some shades of gray now in case of a d2a the dnl will be basically for 1000 you have to get some output and for 999 you have to get some output and the difference between that is larger if you have dnl okay so what that will mean is in the middle you will see something like an edge okay because the difference between this and this and this and this and this and this should have been uniform if the d2a converter is ideal now at one point let's say the d2a converter difference is larger that is it has a dnl so what it will appear as is uh, as an edge in the video okay in the so in uh, usually in those applications in video applications inl is not very important okay inl what does it mean the actual value is something the real value is something else okay so that means that the, it is supposed to be gray to some extent it is slightly differently gray you won't be able to make out okay like when you are looking at a tv you don't know exactly if it is red of this shade and pink of that shade or something if it is approximately true it's okay but when it is changing from let's say red to green or red to pink there should not be a, an abrupt transition if there is an abrupt transition you will make out because there will be an edge edge effect okay so in those applications dnl is more important than inl now in yeah generally that's true that's what i meant some image so usually in images the absolute color is not important because actually the in fact it looks different there this red stuff than it looks on the screen so that is not all that that may not be the most important thing okay your eye cannot distinguish so many colors but when it is transitioning it should be a smooth transition okay so there dnl is more important than inl now inl behaves more or less like a nonlinearity of an amplifier okay it will give you this harmonic distortion and so on so you can have the same maximum dnl and get different kinds of inl okay 
So large INL can give you large distortion. So in A2 days used for communication applications and so on, INL is more important. So roughly speaking, you can think of INL as the overall nonlinearity of the characteristic and DNL as the local step error. Okay, if the local step error increases, locally the quantization noise increases. Yeah, it should be because uh, we have chosen INL of the last one to be. So, and again, that's very easy to see with this example, although it's not general. So, clearly, I mean, this is smaller and this is larger by the same amount, right? The sum will be zero. No, no. Yeah. So, but the only thing is there may be other type of uh, fitting. See, what we did was we made the first transition coincide with the first ideal transition, last transition coincide with the last ideal transition and took the uh, errors in the middle. And this type of fitting is known as endpoint fitting because you fix the endpoints to the ideal values and then do it. There are other ways also which are basically you simply plot the transition points and you find the best fit line. So, are you, I think you guys are familiar with uh, linear regression or something. I mean, you find, you have many points and you want to find a best fit line. So, you can do that also. Now, end point will not be coincident, but you will get uh, some DNL and INL. So, in that case, the sum will be not necessarily exactly equal to 0. Okay. So, there are different types of doing, way, different ways of doing it, but you will get similar answers from others. I won't discuss the other things, but uh, the other things would be you simply measure all the transition points, something like this, and you just fit some best fit line through that. The slope of that will be the gain, and the offset here will be the offset, okay? And the difference between points on this line and the actual points will be the INL, and similarly you can find the DNL also. DNL you can find as the first difference of INL. Okay, so that is known as RMS fitting. So what we did was endpoint fitting, and you can also do RMS fitting of a straight line. to the transition points. Okay. <coughs> so, if you if you go to the Maxim IC company, so it has some data sheets. And actually, I had uh, once taught a course on uh, data conversion circuits. Yeah, actually this is slightly different. So from this you can go to one of the courses on data conversion circuits and there in that reference it is there. Okay. So actually this, uh, in fact I may have the reference here also, one second. Let me find. So, in fact, the very first one. So, okay. So that's a very good reference on uh, this INL and DNL and all of that stuff. All the terminology associated with uh, data converters. Uh, this is one part of it. This is all about static nonlinearities. You are assuming that the input is constant and measuring all of this stuff. Okay. The other dynamic nonlinearities which are also treated there.
Any other questions on this? So, there are AC non-idealities also. I didn't elaborate them. Uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, taking FFTs properly and all of that stuff? Uh, Fourier transforms? Okay. So, I think uh, not all are familiar with it. So, I will probably deal with them later. First, I will go about, see, because yesterday I talked about spectrum and I said, oh, sine wave, you will see this uh, impulse here and so on. But how do you actually do it on a computer? Because today you do all your calculations on the computer. You can't go and integrate the waveform. And the second point is you don't have really the continuous time waveform to play with. You don't have all points continuously and all values continuously. Okay. So, there will be some errors because of that. Uh, some uh, care you have to take while taking the Fourier transforms of quantities. So, we will discuss that next and then perhaps come back to the AC non-idealities of data converters. But before that, are there any questions on this or any aspect of uh, A2Ds that you have discussed so far? Uh, for uh, basic concepts, perhaps let us see, there is a book by Razavi. On I think it is called uh, data conversion ICs or something, I forget, but you can uh, search by name. Now, this book is actually very compact and it is not very detailed on anything, but it shows you uh, a list of many different types of A to D converters. And also, the book by David Jones, The Analog IC Design. I do not know if you are familiar with this. And Ken Martin. Okay. This is not particularly about data converters, but uh, it has some uh, sections on data converters. Okay. And for uh, more advanced users, there is a book by Rudy Van der Plas. But this is really for uh, designing A2Ds mostly. 